everyone. Welcome to our last STEAM Friday for the three to six year olds for this round of STEAM Fridays. I hope you've enjoyed all of our sessions so far and hopefully we are ending on a good note today. We will be making rainbow rain and I'm excited about this one. It'll be fun. But first we are going to read the book, The Falling Raindrop by Neil Johnson and Joel Chin. There's our little raindrop there. Let's see what happens. It was a stormy day. Look at that little storm cloud there. Dark clouds gathered, the wind howled, lightning flashed and thunder boomed. Wow, that is a stormy storm, all right. Do some of you like thunderstorms or maybe you don't like thunderstorms? They can be scary sometimes, but they can also be very neat. As the storm rumbled and shook, something wonderful happened in the clouds. A raindrop was born. There is a tiny little raindrop coming out of the cloud. And we're going to learn how that happens today in our activity. With a little gasp and a big smile, the raindrop began to fall. I'm alive, he shouted. How exciting. He felt like he was flying as he whizzed down through the clouds. There he goes, zooming down. He was the happiest raindrop in the whole world. Look at that giant smile. Then suddenly he had a terrible thought that he was falling instead of flying. Oh, you can see he looks a little worried in his facial expression, his raindrop expression. What if he is falling instead of flying? That's what we say raindrops are falling, isn't it? As he thought about falling, the raindrop's happiness vanished. Oh dear, he doesn't look very pleased anymore. He looks a little surprised. He began to worry about crashing into a rock or a road or a field or a house. Oh, poor raindrop. And so he fell, afraid of what might happen to him. He looks very afraid. There he has his eyes squeezed closed shut, trying not to have whatever happen that he's afraid of. He missed out on the fun of skimming through the clouds. He missed out on the joy of riding on the wind. He missed out on the excitement of racing with other raindrops. He missed out on everything. Sometimes that's what fear makes us do. We miss out on things because we're hiding or afraid or not joining in. Down, down, down he fell, sad and scared and alone. Poor little raindrop. Then he saw something glowing bright on the ground far below. What do you think that is? Does it look familiar? Something you recognize? It was a roaring campfire and the raindrop crashed right into it. What will happen to the raindrop? If something like water goes into something like fire, what happens? For a few moments, nothing happened. Then a tiny cloud appeared. When water gets heated up by going into something like fire, it changes from being water into being steam. The little raindrop had become a wisp of steam. So it floats up like a gas. That's what 
collects on the mirror in the bathroom. If you have a really hot bath or shower, that's condensation, which comes from the hot water evaporating in the shower and it floats in the air as steam and sticks onto the, win onto the mirrors or windows as condensation. So the little raindrop had become light and airy and like all wisps of steam, he began rising. Look, he looks happy again. He's got a big smile on his face. And as he rose, he knew he would join the clouds and become a raindrop once again. And once he becomes a raindrop, he can come down to the earth again and he doesn't have to be afraid this time. He won't miss out on all of the fun things. I think that is the perfect story for today because we are making rainbow rain. And I know our kit looks a little strange. You're used to it having a paper bag with it. But all we had in our kits this time was a little eyedropper. And so we didn't think we needed a whole paper bag for that. So if you can pull out your eyedropper, I did ask you to bring quite a few things this time just because they were things I hoped that most people would have around the house. So the first thing we will need is a glass of water and it needs to be cool water to start. It doesn't have to be cold, um, but cool will work better. And I'm just going to pause for a minute to get better organized so you can see all of my materials. I'll be right back. Here we go. As well as the cold water, you're going to need some shaving cream. And I hope you were able to find some uh, for not too much at the dollar store if you didn't have some at home already. You will also need some dishes for mixing your colored rain. So I just have little applesauce containers that are empty that I washed out. So I put a little bit of water in each of those that I will add food coloring to, to make my different colors of rain. And I have four. You could have as many as you want to make however many colors of rain you want. I only had four colors of food coloring. So that's why I have four dishes. So however much food coloring, you would like to use, you can pull that out. And we will need, you don't have to have this, um, but you could also have some warm water that we can experiment with and see how our experiment works differently with cold water versus warm water. And I also have some canola oil or some cooking oil that we will do the same thing with. So we'll try that out a few different ways to see how it works differently. All right, let's get started with our first job. And that is putting the shaving cream on top of the cold water. So first we want to make sure the cold water is in a clear glass so we can see what happens with it afterwards. And actually, you know what, let's hold off on the shaving cream because I forgot that we need to mix our colors. So we don't want the shaving cream sitting on the water for too long. So you can just take your food coloring and drop a few drops into each uh, little dish of water you have. I'm just going to stir it up with my eyedropper until I get it to the darkness of the color that I want it to be. So I'll keep stirring. This is a neon green, so it might not get too dark, but you can see it's a little bit darker. It's definitely green. So that will work for that one. I also have red, so I'll make some red food coloring. This will make a nice and dark red. That'll be easy to see. There we go. Oops, my bump on the table is stopping there. I have some blue. 
with a nice dark, rich colored blue. And I'll stir that up. And my last color is pink. Now you may also want to have some newspaper. Oh, that pink looks a lot like red, but we'll see. Maybe it'll thin out a little bit. That's okay. Um, you may want some newspaper or paper towel to clean up any spills you have or to put underneath where you're working uh, to keep it from getting too drippy. So if that's something you would like to get as well, then feel free to pause the video and go grab that before we continue on here. Okay, our next job, now that we have all of our colors, our next job will be to put our food coloring on, sorry, our shaping cream on. So what you're going to want to do is shake it a little bit and then we're just going to put it, oh, this shaving cream is not going to cooperate with me, is it? What you want to do is make it kind of into the shape of a cloud on top of the water. So my shaving cream, oh, there we go. Now it's starting to work. And it doesn't have to be too thick, but you do want all of the water to be covered. So I should, there we go. I have a bit of a spiky cloud that's got some horns or points coming off the top there. So now that I have that on top of my cool water, I can choose some of my colors to start dripping with my eyedropper on top of the shaving cream. So I'm going to choose blue first and I'm just going to drip it on top of the shaving cream. And it'll drip, 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 drip for a while. And then I am going to put some red in. And I'll just drip, drip, drip that on top of the shaving cream. And you can do this as well with all of your colors and just watch to see what is happening underneath our little cloud of shaving cream. Here's my neon green. And it might take a few minutes, but if you look really closely by the edge, you can start to see that some colors are coming down out of the cloud, out of our shaving cream and going into the water underneath. And if you don't see that yet, that's fine. Just keep dripping uh, colored water onto your shaving cream. And if you find that you've done that a lot and it doesn't seem to be working still, then what you can do is put your eyedropper right into the shaving cream. Just kind of poke it in and it will squirt the shaving or the color in further to the shaving cream and come down more quickly. So you can kind of see with my pink maybe that that is how it's working. So um, we'll just leave that like that, keep going. And this is how clouds work. Just like the little raindrop in our story fell out of the cloud. There we go, you can see some of my blue. That happened because the cloud got so full of water and so full of rain that it couldn't all stick together in a cloud anymore. So it needed to let some go. And that's what happens every time it rains is clouds get too full of water and they can't hold it anymore. So those little droplets fall down from the sky and fall to earth as raindrops. And then like the little uh, raindrop in our story, 
the rain evaporates again. So it turns into a gas and it floats back up to the sky and rejoins the clouds until they get too full again. And then the rain falls down again. So it, that is called the water cycle. And this week it is supposed to rain a few days. Oh, there we go. You can see that blue going down really quickly. It's supposed to rain a few days. So now when it's raining, you can tell your parents that you know why it rains and what happens to the rain after it falls to the earth and after it evaporates again. It follows the water cycle. So you can do this until your colored water is used up or you can make some more if you want to keep going. And you can wait until your shaving cream melts if you would like, um, if that even happens, because our cool water is supposed to help it stay in its foamy form for a longer time. But I would like to try doing it with some different solutions underneath. So here I have some warmer water and I'm going to make it just a tiny bit warmer still because it's been sitting for a few minutes by adding some hot boiled water. There we go. So that is warm water. It doesn't have to be hot. And you are welcome to try this experiment as well if you wanted to run some warm water out of the tap or heat your kettle a little bit. And we'll do the same thing. So we'll put our shaving cream on top of the water. And we'll see what happens when we do rain into shaving cream over warm water. We'll have to do a few drops first. And even if you don't see, wow, that happened much faster. That water, rain came down into the water much more quickly than with the cool water. So that is interesting. And even while you're waiting and you're just putting uh, colors onto the top of the shaving cream, I'm noticing some very neat patterns from putting my color on top of the shaving cream. So I can see colors mixing together. I had some purple on my other one from mixing blue and red together. I have some yellow on here for my neon green. It looks more yellow when I put it on the shaving cream. So we can see the colors dripping through and it did seem to go much faster in our warm water than it did in our cold water. So I find that very interesting. All right, a little bit more. See some blue rain falling through there. Excellent. All right, one last method I want to try is with canola or cooking oil as the bottom solution for our experiment. So I'm going to pour some oil. Again, you are welcome to do this as well. Um, but if you would just like to watch what happens with mine, then that's okay too. I'm not going to put as much on because I don't want to waste too much cooking oil. But I will put my shaving cream in here. There we go. It's sticking a little bit to the cup. That is the problem with not doing it as high up, but we'll poke that down a little bit. There we go. Get my cloud cooperating here. And then I'm going to see what it looks like when I put the water, rainwater, through my shaving cream into the oil. We'll see how long this takes. It takes a long time because I have a tall, thick cloud. Or if it goes quickly like it did with the warm water. Oh, 
Did you see that? Let's try that again with the blue. I see drops forming while I, instead of just a little bit of a drift of water down, you can see there's two drops of color in the bottom of my cup there. So trying to keep this at an angle that you can see. Let me try again with the blue because that's nice and dark. And it seems to take a while, but then drip down it goes. So this actually seems to form rain drops when it goes through the shaving cream instead of a mist. And sometimes rain does look like a mist because the raindrops are so tiny. But sometimes when it rains, we do get giant drops of rain just like that, that form all together. And I bet if I kept doing this, I could fill up that whole space underneath my shaving cream cloud with all these circles and drops of water. Isn't that cool to see those dropping down? There we go. And we are thankful in my family, we are always thankful for rain because um, my some people in my family like to farm. And so we really appreciate the rain to help our crops grow. And we also like to garden. So we like the rain to help our garden plants and flowers grow and to help our grass be nice and soft and green. And rain helps to protect us from forest fires by keeping the forests um, from being too dry. And rain is just such an important part of life and of nature for keeping lakes full of water as well. So this is very cool. I could do this all afternoon and you are welcome to as well if you have the time for it. And if you don't have any oil at home, then maybe you want to go and pick some up the next time you're at the grocery store. I think you can also pick it up at the dollar store. So if that is an experiment that you want to try with the oil instead of just the water, then feel free to come back to this. So that is our Steam Friday activity for today. I hope you had lots of fun and I hope you've enjoyed all of the programs that we've done over the last few weeks. And feel free as always to let us know on Facebook or by giving us a call or talking to us when you stop and pick up your books so that you can let us know what you've enjoyed about Steam Fridays, what we can change, and just some of the activities you've done. Thanks for coming. Bye. Have a good summer.